It's the Grand Center Right Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light Little Flock. There's a lot of teachings about the mark of the beast, what it is, how to recognize it. There's a lot of information out there. And it would be wise for you to know, recognize, and understand the mark of the beast. Because once you know it and understand it and can recognize it, your perspective is going to change when you read the scriptures, when you read certain things. It will start to pop out at you with greater, deeper meaning as to why it's put there. Every word that Abba placed there, he placed there for a purpose and a reason, or else he would not have put it there. That's why I'm often asking you guys questions like, why is the branch written in all capital letters in the Bible? Why does the grandson of Jesse, the son of David, why is he called the preacher with a capital P? You see how I'm asking you questions like that? Because there's reasons as to why he elevates certain things or emboldens it or puts it out there, puts it forth for you to gain easy access to it so that it's recognizable. Well, as you grow in understanding and you grow in wisdom, that's going to happen with all kinds of words in the Bible. You see? And one of those words I want to highlight for you all today is the word hunter. Okay? What a hunter is. Because to the carnal mind, what is a hunter? Watch how easy this is going to be to see once you see it. And then when you look back at the Bible, your mind's going to go, wow. So a hunter, what is a hunter? And you would say, uh, a guy pops up in your mind, usually a white guy. Let's keep it real. <laughs> he may even have red hair. But he's a white dude for sure. And he's got on some camouflage looking shit that like trees and sticks on, on his clothing. He's got a rifle and shit, some type of vest on and a hat on his head and shit. Got on boots. You see there? That's a hunter. He hides up in the sticks and he shoots with that rifle and he kills his prey and brings his prey home to eat it. And to sell. You see? So now I want to focus on that part there. To sell. He goes out. He sneakily kills a prey with his rifle or his sword. And then he brings it back to make merchandise of it so that he may acquire something from it. You see? That's a hunter. Now, what is the mark of a hunter? What is the mark of a great hunter? Well, if you were to go to his residence or his office or whatever, what would you probably see? You would probably see these plaques on the wall with these heads put up there of the animals that he has hunted and killed. You see? Now, who's the more mighty hunter? The one that has one head up there on the wall or the one that has all kinds of heads, all kinds of different heads? Lion heads, elephant heads, rhinoceros head, bear head up there. Nigga even got a shark head up there. You're like, damn, this is a hunting ass nigga here. <laughs> Shit. Surprise, he ain't got a jellyfish head hanging up there. <laughs> See what I'm saying, little flop? So now. So now. You start looking up there saying, wow, he sure has acquired a lot of heads. So he's a mighty hunter. So the more that he has acquired is the symbol of his adeptness or his skillfulness in hunting. Right, little flock of ladies? Okay then. So that's how the carnal mind would compute that. But guess what? There's another mind there. <laughs> you see? There's another mind there. So now let's dissect this word hunter. You see, hunter means to get and to acquire. Gain for one's self. See all the plaques up there on the wall that represents all the gain that he's gotten? So it represents gaining and getting and acquiring for one's own self. Now, 
across the street real quick now. Okay. Now, what does he have to, what does he use in order to get? He uses the sword. Okay, here we go here. So now there's a blessing that was given from the father. It was called the sword. Who was it given to? His name would be Esau. Now, what was, what was written concerning Esau? Look how that goes together like Legos clicking and dinging. It made sure to tell you about that word we were talking about. See how it's popping out now? Esau was a mighty hunter. You see? Well, he was a hunter and a man of the field. So now we understand what that truly means. See that there? It's not about just killing some reindeer, <laughs> putting his head up there on the wall with his antlers and everything. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about getting, acquiring. You see that today? Using the force of the sword to do so. Force of the sword, course of the carnal mind just means just killing. But to the spiritual mind, it means subjugating another to do the work for you. Forcing him to do it by force of the sword. See, if you don't do it, you'll be killed because that's what the beast does. That's what you would call somebody who was doing that to his brothers. You would call him a beast. I'll give you guys an example. What does a beast mean? It means an unstoppable force. Practically, that's what it means. Something that can't be stopped. That's why in Revelation they're saying, look at the beast. Who can make war with the beast? Okay, well, think about watching the Seattle Seahawks play football. Look at the wisdom of Abba Yah. Watch this, y'all. Think about watching the Seattle Seahawks play football. And y'all were wandering over number 24 named Marshawn Lynch. Y'all were wandering over him. Because when he took that football and took off running, see that there, little flock of letters? When he took off running with it, he went beast mode and couldn't nobody stop him. He ran over everybody. He ran over the linebackers. He ran over the linemen. He ran over the <laughs> cornerbacks, the safeties, and everybody to get to the touchdown, and he couldn't be stopped. So his nickname is Beast Mode. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Can you hear that little flock of leta? <laughs> Can you hear what y'all say to flock of leta? <laughs> Can you hear what y'all say to the flock of leta? Huh? <laughs> Can you? <laughs> so do you see that there today? It's unstoppable. It can't be stopped. That's why they wandered over the beast like you wandered over beast mode when you was watching the damn Super Bowl. See what I'm saying to you? You're like, give it the beast mode. Why did you run that dumbass play? You should have just gave it the beast mode. See? Because he couldn't be stopped. See what I'm saying there, little flock of ladies? Ain't hard to understand. So, so it is with the beast of the end that we read about in Revelation. He has to be a mighty hunter. You see that? Because he has to be able to subjugate people to getting gain for himself. So he kills his brother. That's what subjugate means, put him down under his foot so that he can work for him, do the work for him. That's a hunter that does that. So now let's jump off of Esau. We'll come back to him, but let's jump off of him for a minute. And let's go back to somebody else that's written about before him in the Bible that was also called a mighty hunter. Now we're going to see what mighty hunting gave him. Okay, this other man. His name is Nimrod. Y'all ever heard of him? Now, Nimrod is known for building something or attempting to. Correct, little flock? Now, what? how was he able to do this? This great building he was going to do. He had gathered all nations unto himself and he became their potentate. Uh, if your mind is like mine, you can see where this is all going. Potentate means world leader or world ruler. So all the nations and people came together, see, and was building up this, this Tower of Babel, Babylon. See, same damn thing. And there's a mystery Babylon at the end. So that means there's a mystery or a hidden hunting going on and a hidden, a hidden rising going on that people just don't seem to see it. You see it because they don't know the mark. They don't know the marks to look for. This is what I started saying this video about initially. See? They don't know. So they let people tell them what it is. It means this. It means that. that that's the mark. 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 The mark of, is of Cain. It is his. So what does his name mean? 
to get in a choir. Well, you have to be a hunter to get in a choir. So let's see what, what the hunters that God said they were hunters. Let's see what they got in acquired. They always get rulership over the world. Remember we were talking about Esau? Uh-huh. He has a dispute with his brother over rulership and dominion of the earth. Correct there? But the elder shall serve the younger. See how it going there, little flock of laters. So back to Nimrod. So people were gathered together to build this, this tower unto heaven. See? I am God, Nimrod is saying. In other words, I am God. I rule the earth because I have acquired and gotten more than anyone else. That's the guy that the world wonders over. The richest nigga in the world. That's all it means. Richie Rich. Because there's two Richie Riches. They're both grandsons of God. The one Richie Rich got all the money you could possibly hope to ever imagine. Y'all all wish y'all had that, and that's why y'all gravitate to that guy. Because y'all think that's the pursuit of happiness, is being rich first. And then I'll be happy. So you're not happy unless you're rich. But the Bible says what? Blessed is the poor. It also says, woe unto the rich, before you already got your consolation. So you don't need this comforter that I'm going to send because you've already got your comfort, which is your dollar bills. That's your security blanket that you're sucking on, even though it got flies on it. Maggots have been laid in it, which means they're going to turn into more flies. It's going to be flying around your stinking ass because you just won't let go of that thing that don't work anymore. You're too outgrown for it. <sighs> Y'all see that there, little flock? So Nimrod got in his pride because that's what happens when you become potentate of the world. You become prideful. So what does it say about the Antichrist or the potentate of the end? The one world ruler, see? So he must be a mighty hunter, which means he must have the mark of Cain, the ability to get. And if you have the mark of Cain, then it's clear that you hate your brother because all we have to do is refer to the other guy who got the mark, who is the end of this world y'all living in, named Esau. He hates his brother with a perpetual hatred. You see how the scriptures are jiving perfectly about what the issue is here? So the man who gains control of the whole world and becomes potentate of the world actually hates all of you with a perpetual hatred, but yet you think he loves you. Look at the irony of it all. And it's all because you didn't listen to the truth tell you what love was, which is the other grandson, the other richy rich. He don't have the rich in the dollars. You see that? I have made it clear to you all that I literally live on charity. That is how I survive, on the charity, kindnesses, and love of others. In other words, you guys. So if you love me, then you'll take care of me because I love you and I'm taking care of you. If I give you spiritual gifts, then is it wrong that I reap your material things? That's a scripture. See there? But people don't know that. So when I say it, they say, what the heck is this guy talking about? I ain't talking about nothing. God is. But you don't never want to hear what God got to say because you'll only listen to somebody who got a whole lot of damn dollar bills in his damn pocket because that's what you guys worship. You worship the money. That's why you put in God you trust on your money, because that's what you trust in is your money. And that's your God. So you can't serve both. And you guys know that scripture that says that. So then why screw around with what I'm telling you? You got two grandsons. One has acquired more riches than everybody else. And when he appears on the on the scene, you guys will marvel over what he does with all that money that he's got. And you guys will chase after him. Instead of wander over the wisdom on the other richy riches side, the one who's got rich in wisdom and knowledge and in counsel, see, he's got the, those riches. That's the two grandsons. That's Cain and Abel. So one says brotherly love. I give my life up for my brother so I don't chase material gain. So then he's going to be a poor man. Isn't it obvious? And then there's one that says, fuck my brothers. All I care about is getting money and being the richest nigga on earth and getting more, hunting more, snatching more, swallowing down more blood, swallowing down more meat, filling my belly more and more and more. Even though all I'm going to do is doo do that shit into a toilet, fart that shit out and then swallow down some more and succulate on that shit. Oh, God, it's so good. The blood between my teeth. Oh, God, that's the other brother. You got a choice now. Which one you want? You want Nimrod? 
because he gonna build his nest upon the stars, like Esau said. See how he's saying the same thing? The Tower of Babel means I'm going to set my nest among the stars. Do you notice they're saying the same thing because of the same spirit? There's not a different spirit entering those men that become rich as hell. Do you think Satan, who is, who's, runs all of this world here, this he's the god of this world, which is obviously mammon. So the adversary of brotherly love is self-gain and self-getting, self-acquiring. That is the adversary. Notice how Satan is called the adversary. That's the adversary. That's it. It's fighting against brotherly love, which is the only truth that matters to people that are living, I would say. Because if you can't enter in, if you don't have brotherly love, then what does it matter else you acquire? As the scripture says, why gain the whole world and lose your soul? Why? Um, you don't think Nimrod gained the whole wide world and lost his soul. Do you think Esau gained the whole wide world and he's not going to lose his soul? The Bible already told you he did. The Bible said he sought it with repentance, with tears, and he was rejected. So then it's already a done dealio. And that's what happens when you hate your brother. So the Antichrist literally hates you guys. See, he just give you illusion that he love you by showing off. Because that's what people do in the hood. I've watched them do it my whole fucking life. The nigga in the hood, slanging drugs, making some damn quick money, get his money up, and he buy a nice ass fucking car. And he'll drive right back to the hood where all the other kids and young people are at and show it off in front of them, acting like he's just coming to share it with them. But none of those other people will drive that car. None of those other people will probably even be in that shit. He's just pulling up with the video cameras rolling and shit because he's shooting a music video and shit with his brand new 300 sitting on dubs and shit. And he's out there having a good ass time because he got the SRT sitting there he just caught. So then that's what people that become prideful because they got money do. It doesn't change. The spirit doesn't change, guys. I told you. If he is the God of this world, which is monetary gain, he is the one who rules that. That's why he told Yahusha, I'll give you all of the kingdoms. That's what he's offering. That's what riches offer you, all the kingdoms. I told y'all, it's about who get the riches. If you get the riches, then you become leader because the people will sit up there and salivate over you as if you're God. Look at all of the jewelry he has on him. Look at those stacks of money. Floyd Mayweather ain't even touching the amount of money that Nimrod Esau, modern day, is going to touch. And yet they marvel over that nigga salivating. God, look at the jewels in the Cuban link around Floyd's neck. Jeez, that thing probably cost $500,000. God, he's rich. That would be a great life for me to have. How do you know it would? How do you know? Because look at the shine. Look at the jewels. Look at the money and the clicks and glamour and gold. What did I tell you about the other Richie Rich? The scripture says wisdom far outweighs the price of rubies and of fine gold. It is not to be compared to. See the riches I got? But look how few people come. Look. Because they don't perceive what I'm doing is love. Because they do not know it at all. They don't know God at all. They just don't know. They don't know the scriptures at all. They have not studied to show themselves approved at all. So they're just, just going to go with what their simple mind thinks is best. And what you think that is, little flock? Having money. <laughs> Getting rich. That's the pursuit of happiness. Didn't you guys see the movie? Nigga dropping his son off at the damn daycare, can't pay daycare. He's sleeping in the bathroom with his son on the floor crying and shit. But then as soon as that SOS shook his hand and said, enter on in, buddy, to the riches. He started crying and clapping his hands like a damn seal. Like I told you guys, he tears welled up. Oh, oh. Went and grabbed his son and skipping up the block. Yeah, we did it. We did it. We're in the loft now in the penthouse. We're up there. See what I'm trying to say to you, little flock? Do you see that? It ain't even hard to understand, is it? That's what they say is the pursuit of happiness. The pursuit of happiness is not something to be pursued. I mean, happiness is not something to be pursued. The kingdom of heaven is within you. So then how in the hell would I be chasing something that's inside of my body? That shit is silly as hell to a man like me. <laughs> They're going to say, there's a treasure. Now go get it. 
okay. Everybody took off. I'm just standing there. So like that dumbass nigga's not even gonna find the treasure. I'll find it before he does. No, nigga. Actually, you'll be searching for an eternity and you'll never find it. Because I actually did study his word to show myself approved as I am this day. I actually did. And what I found out was all I have to do is stand still because the power and the treasure is inside of me. So I don't need to run to it. Why? <laughs> why? If I don't stand still, why won't, why am I not standing still? I'm seeking to save my life. Now, if a man seeks to save his life, what that mean? He's going to lose it. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying. <laughs> Do you see? So now, these mighty getters that are in competition to get will all fall down and cast their crowns down before one king. That's the richest. That's Richie Rich. You see? The king of getting. It's, it's his name. That's why I don't understand how you guys don't hear it. I mean, some of you are hearing it. But I'm surprised that the rest of the world just are not hearing this and going, wait a minute here. If it's about, if, mo if, if money is about getting money, then who is the king of getting at? The man whose name is get. Because you are what your name is. Oh, my goodness. I proved that with Yahusha. Yahusha could have been named. I am a lily in the valley. <laughs> that could have been his name. His name could have been Rock Next to a Creek. His name could have been Hammer. His name could have been Stream or River. In other words, words that mean those things. It could have meant Happy. It could have said it, but it actually is what he do. So then that's the evidence, as far as I'm concerned, of what a man does. Now, guess what, guys? I told you, the other grandson, his name means breath. Is the Holy Spirit defined as a breath? See what I'm trying to tell you all? Look it up if you think I'm making that up. His name means vanity. <sighs> see, how, see how when you're doing something, you feel like you're wasting your time doing it or it won't work? You let out a breath with it to prove that it's vanity. See how they go synonymously? And that's why his name means those exact two words. Because his labor is vain. What is it? Look at what I'm doing right now today. The Bible already said that they would all wander after the beast. So what does that mean for a man like me? The other grandson. He is rejected. He is despised. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. We considered him to be stricken of God because he was poor. There's no other reason why. It's because he was poor and he was going through a hard life with holes in his boots, wearing the same clothes every day. So because we saw him in that state, we considered him stricken of God. You can't lie to me because I'm living it. It's my life. See, that's why y'all couldn't lie to Yahusha, because it's his life. My blood is inside of my body. So you can't tell me what my blood is. I am telling you what my blood is saying by opening my mouth by grace so that you can hear what my blood is saying. My blood cry for justice. Does it not, little flock? Every message that you have heard here comes down to that. <laughs> that's what it comes down to. It boils down to that. So then that's what's coming out my blood. That's what my life is. My life is avenging. My life is vengeance. That's what it that's what my name means. To avenge, to deliver. Yeshaya. That's what it means. See? It's no lies in it. It's not even a, a crinkle. That's how he wants his bride. Spotless, he said. <laughs> that's how he needs your life to be in order for you to call yourself his bride. You have to be spotless in your truth of who you are. You know who you are perfectly. Or else how in the hell can you be his wife if you don't know who the hell you are? And the only way you can know who you are is to know the Father. Because you, the true characteristics of a being lie in the Father. 
So I am the truth of what a being is. And the father is a truth of what a being is. See? So then who am I to take his name in anything that's vain and lies? See? See it? So all the work that a man do is vanity. See how it links up with the grandson, with the other grandson? Who I told you, these are all four shadows of the branch. Solomon is one. Abel is another. And do you see how it lines up perfectly? Abel's name means vanity. What did Solomon teach when it said capital P? That all of your getting under the sun is vanity and a waste of time to do it. That's the message that come out of his breath. See what I mean? And it's a labor and he sweats doing it and he labors in it. What do you see here? What does the grandson do? He literally sweats, walking back and forth, laboring with his breath. The work he's doing is with his mouth. How do the wicked get slayed? How do the wicked get slayed, guys? You've been coming to the School of Marvelous Life. You know, they get slayed by somebody's breath. It, could it be the man named Breath? He's the coldest with the breath because that's his name. See, I told you what your name is, is what you are. It's not no fluke. It's not no, you can be something else. Nope. His name is Breath. So he got the breath with the truth in it more than everybody else got. And that's why he's called Yahusha's branch among the ones he called branches because he did say that. I am the true vine, ye are the branches. Well, Yahusha, I've read, see, this is me. I've read in class earlier that there's a man that come whose name is the branch. So then out of your branches, there's one of the men around here, that's that guy. Yahusha's like, that's my son, my only begotten son, Abel. I could, only, I could redeem all my children except that one. Look at the one that's already he can't redeem. What did it say about Esau? He couldn't find repentance. What did it say about Cain? What did it say about Judas? See, the other grandson, another grandson is John. You have to have been following to know what I'm talking about here. It's John. So then we know there's going to be an evil grandson to prove that he is the righteous grandson and the one in whom Yahushua loved. We have to see if there's going to be an antichrist. Well, that's Judas. And he called him the son of perdition. He called him the same thing he called Cain because it's the same spirit that entered him, which is the adversary of brotherly love entered him so he could personally gain something. That's what happens to you when you sell your soul. You overlook your brother to get for yourself. That's when Satan entered into you. Or as the people said, I made a deal with the devil. That's literally the deal you've made. It's not a piece of paper with anything on it. That doesn't do anything. It's the deal you made internally when you knew that what you were going to do was going to be harmful to your brother and you did it anyway. The only way you did it is because Satan entered in your ass. Oh no, grandson, that couldn't be the case. Well then why did Yahushua say, hey Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, for you do not savorous the things of God but the things of men. Can you hear that shit? What Yahushua was saying? Soon as Satan enters into you, you start to covet things for yourself and get selfish, nigga. You savor the things that men savor, which is big ass chains that I described to you earlier. Big ass mansions that I described to you earlier. Big ass cars that I described to you earlier. Now lots of women all around you like I described to you earlier. It's not a chink in it or a wrinkle like I described to you all. Damn, grandson, you're right. You are the branch among branches. Sheesh. Yeah, I am. You see how that work in there, little flock of letters? See how it go? So they all wandered after the beast because of his getting. Y'all all wander after rich people because they got rich. I've interpreted it for you. You all wonder after rich niggas because they got rich. Because they got rich. That's why y'all marvel over these niggas is because they got rich. But they got rich in material wealth, which will not profit a man in the day of judgment. I've already told you it won't. He says their gold shall not what? Yasha them. See? 
because Yasha is a man. He's not money. But since you value money over your man, then that's what's going to happen. And people have continuously did this. I told you it happened to the Negro. So the rest of the world should have just looked at them and paid attention. What happens to you when you let other people just rule over you and tell you what you are so that you can chase game? What do you end up looking like? You end up looking like how black people have looked for the last hundreds of years. That's how you end up looking. <sighs> Well, blacks sold other blacks into slavery. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. I'm not offended by that. You know why? First of all, I'm not black. Secondly, I'm not offended by it because that's what puts a man in slavery. It's selling out his brother. He sold his brother long before the damn slave master came, nigga. He'd been sold his brother for gain long before that. And y'all don't think it got nothing to do with that. Yes, it do. The beast overlooks his feeling. He don't get in his feelings about getting. Neither does that other grandson. That's what makes them unique. He doesn't get in his feelings about the truth. It's just the truth. That's why he's the grandson of right thought. To be in right thought, you have to have overcome all the emotions that block you from the right thoughts. Because that's what your feelings do all day long. That's why I know I'm telling you the truth to the internal life you live. I'm not talking about your external life. I'm talking about when you're sitting there all alone in the room by yourself, the thoughts that are going on in your mind, they're always, you're always critiquing yourself about the quality of how you have acted or done. You secretly are doing it inside your mind. Why are you doing that? Why does it matter what you've done? Why do you care? And why do you feel the worst when you have betrayed somebody? that trusted you. Why is that the worst fucking feeling and the selling of your own soul, which means your psychological body? See, your psychological life, you gave it away so that you could suffer with hope, heaping coals of fire on your head with regret over what you've done without well, sweeping and gnashing of teeth. I told you, sorrow and regret. You're flashing in your mind with you and your friend, how y'all just smiled and hugged on each other and loved on each other and talked about your dreams together. And now that you've grown up, now they're dead. Y'all in here, R. Kelly? How I wish, I wish that you was here today. How I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. What was he wishing? That his friend that was dead would be alive again because he remembered all the fun and all the love that they shared. That's what the song is about. How come your friend ain't there no more? Could it be for all of that glitz and glamour and underage girls and all of that freak nasty shit you was doing? Could it be so that you could do that? That's why you wish your friend was still here, but he gone? Hmm? Huh? How many have done this? How many have done it? Many, 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 many. The Bible says many go therein, thinking that it's the good path to happiness. Stumping and tran stampeding <laughs> each other, stepping on the back of each other's neck is the way to be happy? When there's a law that says you reap what you sow, how foolish is it to reach the pinnacle of society like Nimrod, like Esau, and like the last day's Antichrist? Rises to the pinnacle of every damn thing, standing on the mountaintop saying, I am God, look at me with my cape blowing in the damn wind, just for me to come in front of you and go, I told you my name is Breath. See, I got hot breath. I got hot fire. I'm Godzilla. When I talk, the flames shoot out my shit like that blue shit come out of Godzilla jib and burn your ass to smithereens, nigga. And if you try to hit me with a nuclear blast, Godzilla proved to you what would happen if you touch me with one. I will swallow that shit up with my breath and burp that shit out. <clears throat> See, it's fun knowing who you are, little flock. It's fun knowing your name so that you can be who you are. See that there? See it? People think that my labor is dumb. Oh, gosh. Or in other words, vain. Why do you spend all your time preaching? Why do you spend? Because it's who I am. Who are you? 
some name that the corporation gave you that's in all capital letters that you have to actually sign to agree that you are that guy? That's the name that you're claiming? Okay, well, that's all good and well if that's the case. That's all good and well if that's who you want to be. But I'm going to be who Abba said I am. And he said I'm the breath. And y'all know what the breath means. It means rock. That's the radiation fire coming out of my mouth when I talk that blaze in your insides. It be on your kindle on your head, see? That's an effect because of a cause. Many people have told me of the effect of me talking. Well, there's a cause because I'm the breath. I'm rich with words and truth. I'm full of it because I'm rich of it. It's draped all over my neck, hanging down, like crowns all on my head, backpack full of diamonds and jewelry and everything falling out my pockets. I can barely contain. That's overflowing all out of me. That's why I got to talk every day. Preachers used to just come once a week. I got a good word for you. God has given me. So I been preparing all week. I've got notes written here and got my notebook with all of my, my sermon prepared. And I know I'm going to come before you to give you this good word. I couldn't wait. I've been all week. I've been trying to wait to give it to you. And what are you doing all of that stupid shit for? I don't need a stupid ass notebook. I don't need a pen in my hand or none of that shit. All I need is this heart in my chest because that's where the info is. And all I got to do is reach on in there in my bosom where I love and pull the words out of there. And then here they come. Because I'm rich, I told you, look at my breast pocket and look and see what I got in there. You'll be like, good gracious, it's full of stuff. That's why I got to talk every day. That's why my videos be long as hell. That's why, because a whole lot of stuff in there to talk about. A whole lot of jewelry in that vault. But y'all want the guy that got a whole lot of material jewelry and money, like we've discussed. Because that's the evident token that somebody didn't sold their damn soul. That's the evident token of it. Because we heard him tell Yahusha that. But Yahusha said, only Abba I serve. I only serve I am. You said bow to something outside of me? See what I'm telling you guys. Bow to something outside of myself? No, I don't do that. I don't do that. Ah. So keep your riches and, and, and kingships and thrones. Keep it. So then when you see a nigga sitting up there, like the Bible says, he's going to sit in the temple as he's God. When you see him do that, you're going to wonder and marvel and say, he's got to be. Actually, I just told you, he's got to be the nigga that took Satan's offer. That's how come he's sitting there like that. Just like Nimrod did. Just like Esau did. Just like Cain did. It said Cain was of the wicked one. Who's the wicked one? The serpent. Satan. The devil. Satan deceives you out of loving your brother, thinking you're going to get a reward for doing that. That's what Judas actually did as the example before you all to show it. So then why do you think it's something else? Why do you guys think that it's something else? <laughs> Look, was Judas the Antichrist when Yahusha, which was the true Messiah, was here? So then the second Adam, which this says Yahusha the second Adam, had two sons, just like the first Adam had two sons. His sons were Cain and Abel. Yahusha's sons, in this case, are Judas and John. So John is the one in his bosom whom he loved. That's Abel, the grandson. Cain is Judas, the one who took the money to put in the bag instead and kissed him on his cheek and betrayed him for a bag. It wasn't for nothing else. So why do you think it's changed? That's what I want to ask y'all. Why has it changed? Why do you guys think it's changed from that, from what Judas did? It said Satan entered into Judas. So if the one that made Judas do what he did was Satan, then when Satan jumped into the Antichrist, which the Bible says he is, is he going to make him do something different? A man that got a lot of money can literally get somebody else to kill somebody for that money. It's called putting a hit. That's why I told you, you all are going to put a hit on yourself. In other words, you're going to all put money on your heads. Y'all don't know what having money on your head mean. <clears throat> it means it's a hit out on you. And at any moment you can be killed. That's what's going to happen with you. 
because he lied to you all by saying, hey, if you don't get this mark, you're all going to die. You're all going to be killed. I got to put money on my mind. Man, or I'm going to die. He's a deceiver. He's lying. He's doomed. He wants you to be too. If he told you the truth of his destiny, why the hell would you flock after him and listen to him? So then he must lie to you and tell you that, see what happens when you get as rich as I have? When you get, 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 get? Because all of you guys in the world, you guys have read all of these books from all of these so-called powerful men, Henry Ford and Andrew Carnegie and J.P. Morgan and 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 Larry Fink. Okay, let's use Larry Fink as an example. The guy that runs uh BlackRock. Which is making the most money on the stock market than anybody else. Now, I don't know how to speak in economic terms like you guys do because you guys are the kings of getting. I'm not. I'm the king of getting spiritual things. So forgive me for my lack of vernacular concerning economic things. But I know that Larry Fink is rich as hell because he run BlackRock and BlackRock got a whole bunch of money, trillions of dollars. You see? So when people say Larry Fink, they ask him for counsel because he's shown he can get a lot. So they ask him for that. And he may even charge them for his counsel, for his advice, for his services so that they can get. See what I'm trying to tell you their little flock, Galaters. So in other words, the more getting you get in this world, the more people who love to get will seek after you so that they can become more getting. <laughs> you see? So they can acquire more. That's their end game anyway. And they're willing to do anything to acquire it. I told you a man who sat at my table, cried at my table, thanking me for telling him these truths that he had never heard before, said that he was in the truth. He became legalistic and got caught in Levitical law, which he still keeps and thinks that he's keeping the law, even though I told you this guy has done some horrendous other things other than just not eat meat, which is what he preaches. You can't eat meat, man. Shed. It's one of the biggest principles he teaches when I see him talk to other people. Even though this guy has murdered several brothers. See what I'm trying to say? The hypocrisy? So you don't eat meat, God accept you. But you can kill people? Yeah, love your brother. Yeah. No, it's, it's not eating meat. That's what make you clean. Oh, see what I'm saying? How stupid it gets? Men convince themselves that they're good with God. Okay. All right. If you're not doing brotherly love, then... uh. Doesn't matter what you do. But this man told me to my face after crying, thanking me and trying to change his life, become all legalistic and everything. Walking around with a Bible in his backpack and talking to people about the Bible and everything. He said, I'll do anything for money. So then I don't know what you guys think I'm supposed to say about that. If I'm supposed to be your friend and a guy that you cried over and said, Thank you. I respect you so much. I love you for what you've done. That's what he said. There's a witness there that was there that can attest to everything that I'm saying as well. <laughs> I respect you, man. You just did something for me and that I could never imagine, man. And you opened my eyes. I'll do anything for money. Sounds like Judas. So then eventually... Satan is going to hop his little ass right on into you. So then maybe it's best that I just go on to depart. You hate this kind of man and I got to depart. <laughs> you ain't the shit, but you smell like a fart. <laughs> now I'm up in the sky looking fly as a lark. Because <laughs> these niggas ain't fighting. They pop like a tart. Y'all can't hear me, though. Y'all don't know what I'm saying. I, I What I'm saying there is I got to get a hell away from all of these damn murderers. Because they're cowards. They will not do it to your face and really tell you what they're doing. They do it behind a kiss. You thank you, man. You love me, man. I can tell and I love you, man, for what you did. You're just so enlightened, brother. How did you get like this? Thank you, man, for teaching me this, man. Thank you for showing me the way. I'll do anything for money. So you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. You ain't liking me on the inside. You just trying to be like me on the outside. Well, that ain't going to work, brother. That ain't how it works. 
But do you see, that's how the world works, guys. When you guys all grew up and you went to school, the kids who had some better money had better clothing. And you started to notice that shit. You started to correlate the better shit with more money. That's just what your brain started to do. It's the world you came up in. It's his world. What you think the hell he trying to teach you? He teaching you how to get happiness and joy and everything you want for you. That's what he offers you. And it sounds so great because that's what you naturally want. But it comes at an expense. And the expense is to break God's commandment to do it. So then you can't do it. But people do. See, I do anything for money. I, I will do anything. So then you'll sell your soul. You'll sell your peace. See, you'll sell Jerusalem. Do you see what happened with the Jews? Like I told you guys about the Negroes. They're not in their land because they sold their land. Thinking they were getting monetary gain. No, you're selling your brothers out. That's what Yahushua came to show them. You are killing your people right here on the streets, stoning them, thinking you're doing the right damn thing. You're not doing nothing. You got the hungry here laying on the ground. You won't even check on him. Look at this Levit Levitical priest. You notice how he said the Levitical priest? This is what I try to tell you guys. Y'all can't hear that, though, because y'all can't hear wisdom, I guess, even though she cries for hers. She cries. Her children so damn rebellious and hard-hearted, they won't listen to it. They're too busy set on getting shit. Too busy looking at Nimrod. Too busy looking at Esau and Cain. Letting them deceive you into thinking that it's good to take that damn offer he's giving you. Oh, I sold my soul to the devil. Fucking rapper. He's sitting there looking dead as fuck like a damn zombie with his fucking teeth all grilled out. His eyes all glazed over because he high as hell snorting Percocets right there on the fucking interview and shit. He's all fucking soulless because all he thinks about is death and killing. But he got a bunch of jewels around his fucking neck, don't he? But he's driving in a fucking Hellcat when he leaves that interview, don't he? He got $50,000 sticking out of his pocket, don't he? But he's going to be dead by the time he's 22 years old because he ain't got love in his heart. That's why he look like a fucking zombie sitting there because he ain't got love. But all y'all give a fuck about is that chain that somebody's going to take off of his neck after he's been shot and put it for sale. And somebody else is going to buy it and put that death chain on their damn neck and wear it for a year before they get smoked, nigga. How hard hearted do you have to be to kill a person that looked just like you? And celebrate it and sing about it and make songs about it and rap about this shit and brag. Because you're too busy looking at Nimrod, niggas. You're too busy looking at Cain thinking he the shit. What makes him the shit? The fact that he can shed blood? That make you the shit? The fact that you can kill? The fact that you feel like you didn't stop somebody's ticker? That make you feel like you the shit? Also, you can get and gain and flash that shit in your music video, stacking your money up like a fucking cell phone next to your head. Yeah, right before your head get blew the fuck off, nigga, on live. Because you in your pride. Yeah, I'm dropping my loke. I don't give a fuck who see me, nigga. I'm right here, nigga. Come see me. And then they come see your ass and light your ass up. Now you on live begging for help. Brody, come on, bros. Come help me, man. These niggas got me, man. <laughs> Stupid ass damn niggas. And you think that shit is mean something. What do it mean? What did it count for? It shows how less you how, how low you value your damn self. The fact that you're willing to throw your own damn life away. How do you say you love yourself, man? How do you care about yourself when you're willing to throw your own livelihood away to get something or to take over something that somebody else got? Can somebody explain that shit to me? No, you can't. Y'all can't make sense of it. All you, all y'all got to say at the end of the day is, I got some money, though, bitch. You broke. That's all the fuck y'all got left to say. So then what happens when the money fails? What happens when it fails? Fuck it, I'm going to ride this bitch till the wheels fall off. You don't think about that moment of when the wheels fall off? How silly, stupid, dumb, pathetic you're going to look in that moment? All you thinking about is the momentary riding them, them big ass rims is giving you? They don't fit your car. Why are you trying to fit them bitches on there just so you can have people look at you? Why are you doing that? Because, man, that shit feel good when people look at you and think you the shit. And then here come the wheels falling off. And now they are looking at you. But they don't think you the shit no more. They think your car look like shit. That's what they think. Yeah, but man, that shit was fun, man, back then. That's a sad commentary. <laughs> For that to be your legacy. Yeah, it was fun back then. 
doting ass old nigga. You look pathetic sitting on the porch. Can't even stand up straight because you're all broke down because you fucked too much during your younger years. And all you think about is the younger years when you fucked them hot ass girls. You dote like an old ass doting ass nigga. Old niggas do it all the damn time. These older niggas is some of the most perverted niggas in the fucking world. I swear. It didn't even happen to me in my damn life. I was 16 years old, little flock. Why we just talking while I'm on my way up out of this heat? I was about 16 years old standing at a bus stop. I see a carpool. He's going up the street and shit. And he's looking at me out the car as he's driving by. He's the same race as me. He's just a little bit older than I am. Looks like he's maybe in his 30s, early 30s. But he drive on past, right? I'm like, hmm, what this nigga doing? He's looking all at me, all suspicious out the window. I'm like, why is he looking at me? I don't know that nigga. <laughs> like I said, I'm 16. I'm in high school at this time. I'm catching the bus to go to work. See? So I'm sitting there at the bus stop, and the guy pulls it. He, he eventually loops around. I see him driving around the loop. I'm like, the hell? he's still looking at me. I'm like, what the hell is this nigga looping around for? I'm thinking this in my mind. What the hell is that nigga doing? And at this time, I had long hair like I did on these videos when I had my long locks. But back then, I didn't have locks. I just had long hair. I used to have it braided and stuff. But at this particular time, I just had it pulled back into a ponytail down my back. Long, right? So he pulls up. He's like, hey, hey, man. Hey, don't I know you? I'm like, no. He's like, yeah, I do. I, I know you, man. Yeah, I've seen you before. I'm like, no, I don't know you, nigga. I don't know you. Never seen you. He's like, didn't we party one time? Didn't we hang out? I'm like, no, it couldn't have been me. He was like, yeah, we was at the club the other day. We were hanging at the club. I said, man, I'm not even of age to go to the club. So it wasn't me. I know for a fact it wasn't me because I ain't even eligible to make it into no clubs around here. So get on up out of here. And he's just going on. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he pulls up a little closer in the car. And he gets up kind of close to me and everything. I'm standing there looking. He's like, well, do you want to get to know me? And he kind of licks his tongue out and the guy looks at me up and down and everything. I'm like, man, no, nah, bro, man, just go on your way, man. Go on your way for a call my daddy. <laughs> he right down the block, man. I ain't tell him that, but I'm, I'm thinking about my life. Just go on your way, man. Just leave me alone, bro. And he went on and pulled on off and left. But do you see that shit right there, little flock of letters? 16-year-old kid of his own nation, and this is what he's doing. Making up some cockamamie lie-ass story to try to get next to me. The fuck kind of shit is that? Called perversion. Called sick. It's called killing your brother so you can get something. That's what it's called. Called having guile on your tongue. That's what it's called. So like I said, these niggas out here is sick as hell. I'm sitting at a McDonald's one day. There's another gentleman of my own damn people. Y'all don't want me to talk about this shit, Israelites. Then don't do the shit. But since y'all do do it, I'm going to talk about it. Right before all the rest of the nation. Show them how y'all ass stinking ass draws too. Niggas sitting there. I'm in the McDonald's. Older nigga walking here about 50 something. He just walks over to me, pulls his cell phone out, starts showing me these pictures of these, like, naked women and shit, legs cocked open and everything, and all of these, these prom promis I mean, <laughs> compromising positions these women are in. He's just scrolling through, showing me, like, look, look at this, young brother, look at this, look. I'm like, okay, what's that? He's like, hey, man, it's a website, man. Now, the McDonald's is right across the street from a Motel 6, right? So he's like, hey, hey, look at this. All you got to do, man, is click on the girl you want. You scroll through, you click on the girl you want. And then she gonna respond and you let her know what hotel and what room you at and she'll meet you there, man. The girl you pick on there, she'll meet you there. And then you pay her you pay her the money, you can do what you wanna do all night long, man. Trying to give me a high five and shit. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. Oh man, you sure man, you a young man, you a young good looking man. Man, you can get any girl on here you want. I'm good, bro. See that advice? Look at this shit. Look at the council. Hey, man, did you know about this web? Just a random man you come up to. Did you hear about this website? You could do anything you want to do. You call the girl, your pair. She come right here to the hotel, right across the street where I'm about to go. It's so great. Well, then go ahead and take your old doo-doo greasy jaws ass on up in there to Jezebel so she can drink your damn wine. Because she ain't going to drink mine. <laughs> Y'all hear me today, little flock of lakers. Just telling y'all the truth. This shit's sad, man. Niggas is deluded so bad that I could understand why I would say, yeah, your name Abel, which means breath, but it also means vanity. Because all of them words that was put in your mouth to say, 
They just didn't heed to it because they don't heed to me. That's what Abba whispers in my ear when I be marveling over how the fact that they don't believe. He goes, they don't listen to me, grandson. I be like, good gracious. <laughs> how can they not listen to you? Every time I hear you, I'm so overjoyed and, and so relieved and happy <laughs> that I don't understand why nobody would want to listen to you. Well, that's what he said, little fly. Not my words, his. See that there? So now you should understand Hunter. You see, and why Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his venison. Isaac, let's translate. Isaac loved Esau because he... <laughs> the dude over here doing stunts on a motorcycle. Isaac loved Esau because he benefited from his getting. Just like a father would if he had two sons and one son was filthy rich and could get a lot of money. He gonna give his dad nice cars and nice um, food, dinners. He's gonna take him a nice dinner for Father's Day. He's gonna buy him nice clothes to wear. He's gonna do that kind of shit and he's gonna love his son because of that. And the other son is kind of like not thought of because he doesn't take thought of those things. He's a plain man dwelling in his tent. See, his inner world. See what I mean, little flock? The other grandson is a plain man. Plain means perfect. Read Job and look at the word there. It's called tom. Tom means perfect and plain. See, he was a plain man dwelling in his tent. The other grandson, that is. And so because they're different nations or different types of people, the Bible says those two grandsons are two different types. It's two different choices you got then, in other words. Can y'all hear the wisdom of this message? Like I've been telling you about the two grandsons, the two choices you got. They are the two nations. They are the two choices that are available to every man. Those two grandsons. Because they're two different manner of people. See? That's what the Bible says. And that's why they have a battle between the two over rulership. The choice one. Which one will be the choice one? Abba, Abba already told you. Just like he said, when he said, I told you, I said it before it happened. That the elder shall serve the younger before they had been born or did anything. So he already told you. Who's the older, Cain or Abel? See? See how it doesn't change? The older brother is the getter of material things. The younger brother is the getter of spiritual things. And so the younger brother is always going to be the ruler. And the other brother is going to hate him for his fact that he's the ruler. Because he stacked up the better riches. And I'm proving every day I got the better riches. So you decide what you're going to do with it today, little flop. Silwan Nesorella. <laughs>